everyone. I'm Jill Sharp and I am so excited. We are actually to episode four of Truth Talk for Singles. So I'm so pumped to be on here talking to you guys today. And what I want to talk to you guys about today is the topic of how to identify a counterfeit relationship in your personal life how to identify a counterfeit relationship. And so that's what we're hopping into today. And I wanna give you, I think it's about seven practical tips for basic things that apply to every single person that will help you to identify whether or not that person that you are interested in is a God sent godly relationship that he has potentially brought into your personal life, okay? And so what I did is I backed every single one of these up with scripture because I want you guys to know that this is biblical and that these are basic things that you can kind of run through in your mind when you're examining whether or not you should enter into that particular relationship with that individual okay all right so let's look at this together shall we so identifying counterfeit relationships in your personal life number one thing that you should watch for is that person leads you farther away from god's presence instead of closer to god's presence that's a big old red flag and it's a sign that that person was probably not sent by god let me read you some scripture on this. This is Matthew 6, 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says that all these things shall be added unto you. So I'm going to ask you a question. Why would God send you someone that would lead you farther away from his presence instead of closer to him if it was truly a gift from him? I'm going to answer that question for you. He wouldn't, guys. God is not going to send you someone who's going to take your focus off of him. He's going to send you someone who's going to inspire you and motivate you to run faster and chase closer after God in your personal life, okay? So that's a big one. If you're feeling more distraction by being around that person than feeling like you're getting closer to Jesus, it's probably a sign that they're probably not God sent. Amen? Okay. Number two sign that you may be dealing with a counterfeit is they're straight up an unbeliever in Christ. Amen. It's such an easy, simple thing, but the Bible is very, very clear on our stance as a Christian. And I want to read you the scripture for that. This is 2 Corinthians 6, 14. It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness. Amen. And so God did not send them, if you are a believer, on fire Christian for Jesus Christ, and they don't even believe in God. It's not the right timing for marriage, if that's the case. And usually it's not even the right person, okay? And so they got to be a believer in Christ. That's a big one for identifying your counterfeit, okay? Number three for identifying a counterfeit. There's a lack of peace in the relationship. And I always like to clarify with this one, Okay. You can still have something that is not of God and your flesh really, really, really wants that relationship in your personal life, okay? Just because your flesh wants it does not necessarily mean that that thing came from God in your personal life, okay? So you've got to feel that peace about it in your spirit, man, okay? And you've got to know that it's that peace that surpasses all understanding that God is blessing that relationship, Amen. I wanted to give you the scripture to back this one up. Philippians 4, 7, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Did you guys catch what that scripture just said? It told us that peace is a guard in our personal lives. Amen. It guards you. It protects you from things that are not of the Lord. And so if you're always having this nagging feeling that just will never go away about a relationship, it always seems like something is just never quite right. That could be Holy Spirit trying to talk to you and be like, hello, alarm bell. This is not of God. This is not a good thing in your personal life. Amen. So look for that peace on the relationship. Okay. All right. Number four sign that you could be dealing with a counterfeit is that person that you were interested in does not demonstrate good fruit in their personal life. In other words, their walk does not match their talk, quote unquote, and what they claim that they believe in. You know, Matthew 5, 16 says that you will know them by their fruit. Okay. So let me tell you what this practically looks like. A lot of people claim to believe in Jesus, but they're living exactly like the world with their lifestyle. 
Amen. That's a good sign that God did not send that person. If they're up at the club every Friday night, if they're out drinking, sleeping around with people, doing drugs, smoking, whatever it may be, if they are living a lifestyle that is not pleasing and honoring to God, even if they say they believe in him, that's a good sign that you're dealing with a counterfeit and you need to leave that person alone. They've still got some growing to do. Amen. All right. That leads us into the next one, which is really critical. Number five reason you could be dealing with a counterfeit is Jesus is not first place in their personal life. Now, they may believe in him, but they haven't accepted him as Lord of their life. And there is a huge difference between that, ladies and gents. There's a big difference between someone who just goes to church and claims to be a Christian versus someone who is living a sold out on fire lifestyle for Jesus Christ and someone who allows Jesus to call the shots in their life. Amen. I wanted to read you 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 through 15 today. It says, For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for their sake and was raised. Listen to me, ladies and gents, if their lifestyle is not surrendered to God, if they are not allowing God to call the shots over their lives, you need to run fast and you need to run hard away from that person, ladies and gents. God did not send them. Okay. All right. Number six reason you could be dealing with a counterfeit is that person does not respect your boundaries. Let me give you a classic example that comes up a lot of the time. You know, a lot of people will try to pressure Christians to have sex before marriage. And the Bible clearly says that is not something that is of God. Amen. This could also look like a person who doesn't respect your boundaries because they are verbally abusive or physically abusive, ladies and gents. And this goes entirely against scripture. The one that God sends you is going to be a good gift. They won't be perfect because no human is perfect, but they're going to be a good gift and they're going to be respectful of your boundaries in Christ. Wanted to read you two scriptures on this one. The first one is Ephesians 5.25. It says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Listen to me. Abuse is not acting loving. Amen? Straight up. Well, I don't care whether it's verbal abuse. I don't care whether it's physical abuse. That's not the way it's supposed to be. And that is a counterfeit person. Likewise, let me flip it. Okay. Ephesians 5.33 says, however, each of you must also love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. Respect looks like respecting someone's boundaries, ladies, okay? And so there needs to be that element of respect on both sides where you are, you know, embracing someone who is respectful of your boundaries and who is a safe person to be around. Amen. All right. And I got one more for you today. Seventh reason that you could be looking at a counterfeit in your personal life is that person is not open to correction and they do not submit themselves to authority. Y'all, this is one that gets overlooked a lot of the time and I cannot tell you how big this one is. It, it's so important, okay? Let me read you Titus 3, 1 through 3. It says, remind them to be subject to the rulers, to the authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed, to malign no one, to be peaceable, gentle, gentle, and showing consideration for all men. All right. The very beginning of the scripture is what I want to focus on the most, although the whole thing's good. It says, remind them to be subject to rulers, authorities, and to be obedient. Okay. There's a lot of people who claim to be Christians who are not obedient and do not submit themselves to the authority that God has put over their lives. So what does that look like? Authority over your life could be your pastor. Amen. It could be other Christian leaders in the church that God has called you to. Authority in your life could be your parents. Amen. Authority in your life could be your husband, ladies, if you're intended to be married down the line. Authority in your life could be your boss, your supervisor at work. And scripture clearly tells us that we are to be subject to those that God has put in authority over us. And not only to be subject to them, but to be obedient to them. Amen. There's a whole other teaching that I could do on submission to authority and all of this fun stuff. And a lot of times we think about it just in terms of women, but it's not. Men and women both need to be subject to the authority that God has put over their personal life. And if you're looking at somebody that is not submissive and is not subject to the leaders and the authority that God has put on their personal life, and they are not at all open to a place of correction when they step out of line, 
that's something you need to run hard and you need to run fast from, ladies and gents. Do not get yourself in a bad situation by yoking yourself to someone who is not in a good place with that regard. Amen. So all of that to say, ladies and gents, these are a few of the signs that you can watch for and you can run by Jesus to identify whether or not that person that you were interested in is potentially a counterfeit in your personal life. And above all else, ladies and gents, I encourage you guys to pray about things. God will show you whether or not he wants you to marry someone. Amen. He's going to bring confirmation that that stuff. He's going to talk to you about this stuff. And the very best thing that you can do is to pray about this. You know, the other thing that I want to reiterate is, you know, if you look at this whole good or God concept, you know, in the garden, Eve went to go eat the fruit and it was described as being good and pleasing to the eye. However, because it was not the God thing and the God instruction over her life, it still harmed her when she ate it because she was in a place of disobedience. Just because a person looks good on the surface, ladies and gents, if God is telling you no to that person, you need to trust him. You need to be obedient because even if it looks good, ladies and gents, if it's not for you, if that's not the person that God wants you to be yoked to in your personal life, it will still be destructive for you down the line. Amen. So all of that to say, pray, 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 pray about this stuff, ladies and gents, pray about people who you were interested in, and then run them through this simple test, run them through the counterfeit test. And then if you're feeling that peace, if you feel like God is causing it to move forward, that's awesome. But if you're getting a lot of red flags, it may be time to put on the brakes to really pray about this stuff and to ask God to show you what to do in these particular situations. Amen. I'm Jill Sharp, and this has been episode four of Truth Talk for Singles. Love you guys. Check in next time.